asking simple questions. Hi, my name is Alexei, Alexei Pavlov, and I am from, from Russia. Perhaps that sounds not good to many of you, but I exist here. That's my first podcast in English on a on a some kind of philosophical topic. So probably it's going to come out a little chaotically, sorry. I was born in the Soviet Union in 1972 in the great city of Stalingrad. In the current year, I am 50 and I've been living in Moscow for a quarter of a century. Today, I have absolutely democratic views and outlooks. Despite the fact that I am from the USSR, which was, sure, a totalitarian state, and this state was my homeland. But I got very lucky to be born and grown up in a real beautiful family, and to have highly respected parents. I had the best childhood as much as it could be imagined. Today I have friends in many countries, so I use English in a consistent way, fully realizing its worldwide indispensability. I enjoy reading books in English the greatest novels ever written, watching best-known movies, having real communications, and so on. That's great. Just a pity that I started to study different languages a little late, but doesn't matter. I do prefer the format of something like radio. Sometimes it's enough to voice the idea. And like-minded people are most probably going to be found. Well, now there is one point I'd like to discuss today. We need to ask simple questions as much as possible. Tough and even cynical questions, both to others and to ourselves. We quite often find ourselves in tough situations, private or global, maybe of both, when we can't figure out where is the truth and where is the lie. Let me give you an example. Some people endlessly pick up excuses and reasons for one bad guy, convincing around that this guy, who is clearly the evildoer, that he is actually kind. At the same time, others declare that a real good man is guilty, just because they don't like him. Maybe they got paid well for their bold-faced lie, and now they are able to lie in a consistent way, and they do that pretty handedly. And if the bribable propaganda is not absolutely stupid, displaying out the freaking guys and any other douchebags, it might be no good deal for ordinary people. Sometimes it's really hard to manage to find out the truth. Life may not be long enough to figure it out. Some might say that politics is a dirty business and all to no avail. There is no point in wasting time. But that's not quite true, I'm sure. Secondly, why is politics a dirty business by default? And firstly, sometimes it's no longer politics, but bombs, blood and great suffering. Whether you like it or not, but at some point in life you'll be forced to think hard, talk a lot, looking for the truth. And just when we start asking simple and direct questions, simplifying all what's happening on, the picture is going to be much clearer and more understandable. But you gotta keep something in mind. There are always the ones who say with indignation. Hey, you, maybe don't you know how things are there abroad? It's even worse over there. Or, you can't even imagine how bad it used to be in the past. And the whole shebang. And the worst thing is when failures and blunders of the rulers begin to be masked by so-called great traditions and even by the motherland. There is one good saying. It seems the rulers have been stealing too much if they started talking loudly about patriotism. You gotta pay back your debt to your motherland, otherwise you are a traitor, they say pompously. Is there anybody able to ask a few simple questions? Has anyone really attacked my homeland? No? Okay, let's move on. Now about my so-called dad. What did I borrow? What exactly do I have to pay with? Time, health, or maybe life? All is possible, if this is really necessary. But I have to clearly understand, in the name of what is going to be my self-sacrifice. For what exactly will I put my time, my health, and maybe life of mine? Unique life. Mine, not theirs of rulers. 
For what reason will my dear mom be crying? My wife and kiddies will suffer. What the heck? The people should not live for the state and its obsession. The state should exist for the people, right? Today, every ruler just have to remember the greatest words of Abraham Lincoln in his Gettysburg Address soon after the Battle of Gettysburg. The government of the people, by the people, and for the people, and not the other way around. Only if you clearly understand why you should do something, what exactly it is for. Only in this case it looks like, at least, reasonable. Suppose it's your country that's been attacked, like insidious Hitler once had done against Great Britain, France, the USSR, which was my homeland, and also against other countries. Everything has been perfectly clear in this case. The enemy has come to smash, to demolish, to kill you and your besties all around, and he does it with decision. This goddamn low life has his own freaking ambitions, obsession, and he's a totally crazy in his mind. He's just a conqueror. For some reason, by the way, many historians consider conquerors as heroes. I don't know why. That's a bit weird. It is the conquerors who send their soldiers to go and kill civilians in the adjacent territories, because they most like to grab someone else's lands. And after that, what kind of heroes they are? Could you imagine in reality the hero who's been killing your neighbors? If you can't, then you can imagine that the neighbor who was assassinated, it was you, or some one of your besties and relatives, your kitty wife, mom or grandpa, for example. Terrible things, right? So conquerors are not heroes. They are rather killers, nothing more. The real heroes are those who defend their homeland, their family, children, and the elders. But unfortunately, for many people, only winners are always heroes. Okay, but if Hitler had ever won, who he would have remained in history in this case? Also like a hero? That's so simple. We put a clear question, say, who has been attacked? Who attacked? Who exactly carried out the brutal invasion? Who gave the order to go and shoot him? And who were those who carried out this heinous order? Is it really hard to end up to find out the answer? Maybe it's going to be easier to send all the fake politicians and the mask-faced corrupt propaganda to the hell and do think carefully for yourself. Well... Let's get off the political topic. Don't forget, please, where I am from. Because if everything is simplified, then we, who maybe have at least a little clarity of mind, fully understand all the tragedy and shared responsibility for many years to come. It's very sad and deep misfortune. Okay, we make another effort and leave again the political ruminations. Let's take the following example. Now for the youth. Here in our location, dear friends, the elders often say, you have to study at the university, in high school, and so on. Obviously, you have to, but? But what exactly do you need to learn? How many years are going to spend? What kind of result do you expect to get after? And now, we must pay attention to a very significant point. We're going to spend some really active and most productive years of life. And preferably not to lose them all. When you're around 20, that's one thing. You have a great deal of energy, of self-confidence, an irresistible desire to achieve any goals. And all of that is actually possible. But there is also the opposite thing simultaneously. It is a totally different point when you are already 30 years old, 40, and so on. How much do you have left of that young power of great eagerness and diligence? Not so much, I'm afraid. And is there anything left at all when you are 50, like me, for example, 60, and so forth? Great doubt. So, it is extremely important to spend these younger years as most useful as possible. But... If a young man suddenly wants to go to work before any education, 
to earn his first money, to feel his very first little financial independence. What is likely to happen in this case? Most likely, he'll be immediately getting the huge resistance of many elves around. He owes something again, somewhere and to someone. It is necessary, the elders insist. You have to do that. As a result, the first aspiration, the pure young motives and goals, it was all suppressed just in the bud. Okay, it was just said by the young man or lady. Where could I go to study? Accountancy? Law? Economics? What else is prestigious and highly rated in modern society? Where is going to be easy to find out a well-paid job after? In fact, these are really good fields to work. But what about you? It was that what you personally ever wanted. Unfortunately, the key point, what would you like to do in your single life, this fine challenge, had disappeared. It's gone. Doesn't matter what you'd ever like. Do now what you gotta do. That's all. We need to remember that, at the age of 20, we are absolutely sure that our life is internal and timeless. We still have a lot of time to do all we want to do. So, we can spend this time all we want to spend. We are also sure that, even at the age of 30, but after you're 40, this feeling disappears for good. It goes away forever. And it's all gone in conjunction with those great goals you used to dream about in the past. Well, let's try to get everything simple again. Here is the next questions. Those very grown-ups who daily insist what you should do. Do they live well themselves? Do they have any real success? And what about you? Do you like their achievements? You'd love to have the same. If it is so, that's perfect. You are actually lucky. You have the experienced adults. Their advice should be listened to. But either way, you have to draw your own conclusions. This is your life, and your own missteps give you priceless experience. But how often we can see that majority of adults are really successful people? Not often, I'm afraid. Then, why do we get an experience which is not good, which is a way to failure? We just need, in this case, to see what exactly not to be done. And please, always make much difference between respect for elders and clearly posed questions. And again, respect only for good elders, not to those who, being in advanced years, should be brought to the justice, but they are still saved just because of their high status and major political positions. Unfortunately, there are always a lot of rascals of any age in our world. Well, let's try now to pick up some more pleasant topic. Love, affection, tender feelings, okay? You are a, a very young man, you have fallen in love with a nice girl, or at least you think you do so. Are you ready to honestly answer a simple question, which is posed to yourself? What you'd like to have more? Do you want to love her on the whole, or be able to have her, to possess her, for today and maybe for tomorrow, in every sense of this word, sorry? Yes, you have a little life experience, but you are young, strong, and very purposeful. And this beautiful lady is just in front of you now. Sure, it doesn't mean that this girl needs to be pushed away. No, by no means. But it would be better to be careful about love. Love is always a wonderful thing, but if you take a wrong way, the consequences will not be very good for both of you and for your kiddies in future. Surely, everyone initially understands that well, but for some reason, too many have their bad outcomes. And now, about the ladies. Let's say she really likes the young one who is very self-confident, hot-blooded, and this handsome fella is even a little cheeky. All the girls around are in sweet dreams of him, and she's also madly in love. But is there anyone nearby whose opinion is important to her and who is able to ask her a few simple questions? For example, take a look, honey. Yes, he's a great guy, but what else is he like? He's strong? Yes. 
courageous and audacious? Also yes. Is he kind? Hold on, please. Sorry, but it's still unknown. Is he reliable? Nobody knows that either. Let's move on. Does he have any bad habits? Oh, looks like he does, and at such a young age. Well, what does he look like when he's tipsy, when he's drunk? He is able to retain self-discipline. How does he feel the ladies in general? He just breaks up right after the pleasure he got with her. Or he is sincerely grateful to her for the adorable moments they had. Is he respectful to women? Or maybe today we can see only his primitive one-man show, just because he wants her, and that's all. The more we honestly answer our simple questions, the clearer we get a portrait of this guy in detail. Now, dear young lady, you'd better think twice about who have you fallen in love with and why. The reason is simple again. Everyone around loves this boy and he is really charismatic. He is unlike, for example, that boring wiseacre who is stubbornly reading books around the clock and studying more and more, that's right? But this nerd, who is the wiseacre, is actually a hard-working guy and most likely is going to be turned really successful and, and that's the most important thing, reliable. And when he achieves his goals, Unfortunately, he won't be your man, a charming young lady, neither your husband nor the father of your kids. And why? That's simple again. Because the charismatic boy, who now has a great chance of becoming a drunkard, a sponger and totally lazy one, it was just he who once everyone liked. And you did too. At that time, nobody cared about it. Everybody saw just one thing. One of two guys was a cool dude, while the other was boring, and that's all. And no questions had been asked by anyone. And this is not some kind of complicated science of psychology, but just a habit of asking yourself honestly and directly. The more perfectly you get answers, the clearer the picture is going to be. We are often told that life is a very complicated thing. Yeah, sure, that's true but just a little. We, ourselves, make our own life even more difficult than it needs to be. And again, there is a simple question that we should ask. Why? For what? Why do we always confuse and tangle everything and then go crazy of what happens around? I am 50 years old now in 2022, and I fully and increasingly understand that we need to put the simple questions to ourselves as often as possible and get answers as honestly as possible. And when you, you are young, the views and opinions of the elders need to be checked very intently and closely. You have to clearly understand that this is your way, this is what you need to yourself in today's realities. And I do repeat that the opinion of elders and respect for them are entirely different things. Our adolescence and genivility, that's all behind, in the past. The world itself, at that time, didn't look the same as it now does. We, who are very adults, rarely change our persuasions, hardly ever. And most of these persuasions are no longer valuable, not because they've been initially bad. The reason is, they are not sound now. This way is unable to get the result you desire. And it's exactly us, elders, who constantly try to teach you, youngsters. We are invariably sure that we are always absolutely right. And if you disagree, many adults begin to demand and even to force you to do what they want. They, not you. But we know perfectly well that not many elders is able to ever admit openly their own mistakes. Unfortunately, as a rule, some adults are totally sure that everything they have ever done in their life is right, and this is a remarkable experience for their posterity. On such occasions, I like to repeat one of my thoughts once hit my mind. They are sitting on the ruins of their own well-being, but they keep teaching everyone around, 
as if they are actually sages and gurus. But we put our questions again. Those who teach you in a consistent way, are they succeeded themselves? How long they've been ahead at least in one walk of life? What kind of field they've excelled? Maybe we need to ask our question more severe, even cruel, but sometimes it's necessary. What about our parents? Once again, this is not disrespect, but just the ability to correctly analyze. And if you undoubtedly answer, yes, that's right, my parents are really successful. I want to be the same in my way as they've been in theirs. Hotly congratulations. You have all to be happy. And I wish you not to lose that, but to increase. Finally, the last thing I'd like to say today. I do hate any war and despise anybody who started and supported We can see that the world is getting some sort of kind. Yes, unfortunately, this happens very slowly. But historically, it goes by fast. And that's nice. It gives us some hope for the triumph of peace and love. Let it be so. Maybe you know, but even in the totalitarian USSR, which was my home country, children sang a wonderful song containing the following amazing words. Let sunshine be always. Thank you for your time. My name is Alexei. Alexei Pavlov. God bless you and well-being to your home.